All right, let's uh, begin with the class. Uh, objective is that we are going to understand the basics of normal distribution and uh, conceptualize the difference between uh, normal distributions and other, dif other distributions, right? So the first thing is that uh, the normal distribution is used to model a continuous random variable. In statistics, there are two types of variables, qualitative and quantitative. So as far as qualitative, quantitative variable is concerned, as far as quantitative variable is concerned, quantitative variable are two types of, there are two types of uh, quantitative variable. Number one is discrete and uh, number two is continuous. Right, so there are two types of variable. One is discrete, discrete variable and another is continuous. Previously, we have studied two types of different, uh, two types of distributions, the binomial distribution and the geometric distribution. Both are used to model discrete variables. So for modeling discrete variables, we have two distributions. Discrete variables are uh, variables which cannot take decimal values, which only take integer values, which have clear steps between its possible values. So binomial and geometric distributions are basically used to model discrete random variables. And for modeling continuous variables, we will be using normal distribution. And uh, Discrete variables only take whole numbers. Continuous variables can take decimal values. Just to conceptualize and understand, we should know, we should remember the keywords that discrete variables are countable. All the variables which are countable are discrete and all the variables that are measured, that are measurable are continuous. So normal distribution is used to model a continuous random variable so all the variables which are measurable are continuous. The three examples are the height of a student. We measure the height, the lifespan of a bulb. It can be in decimals as well. The length of a table, 2.32, 2.35, 10.3, 10.4. So this means all the variables which have a continuous nature, which are measurable will be, uh, all the variables which are continuous they will be a part of normal distribution. This means normal distribution will be used to model them. Now, just like other distributions, there are two parameters of a normal distribution. In binomial distribution, uh, we saw that there were two parameters. One of them was N and another was P, N comma P. In geometric distribution, we saw that there was only one parameter and that was the probability of success. X belongs to binomial number of, fixed number of trials and the probability of success, the two parameters, and in geometric distribution, only one parameter that was probability of success. In normal distribution, there are two parameters. X belongs to binomial, X belongs to B means binomial, G, E, O means geometric, and X belongs to N means normal. So whenever X belongs to normal distribution, this means random variable X is normally distributed. What does this mean? Random variable X is normally distributed and there are two parameters. One of them is mean, and another is variance. So always remember that in bracket, the first value is of mean and the second value is of variance. This is the sign of mu, right? So mean has a symbol mu. This is the symbol for mean. And this is the symbol for variance. And this is the symbol for standard deviation. We draw a horizontal line and we make a circle, right? like this, draw a line and we make like this. So this is the symbol for standard deviation. This is what? This is standard deviation. And we all know that the square of the standard deviation is variance. So the first value is of mean and the another value is of variance. So there are two parameters of normal distribution. Now the second concept is the standard normal distribution. What is basically standardization? And why do we have to standardize the variables which are normally distributed? Which, because this is something different in normal distribution, which was previously not done. 
we uh, never used to standardize the variables but over here the all the variables which are normally distributed need to be standardized so let's read this and then i'll explain the concept behind it probabilities for 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 a normally distributed random variable are found from tables we all know that whenever we have to find the probabilities in normal distribution we use a table so we have a standardized table for it and one table will be used for all types of normally distributed variables means there is not a separate table for every question there is one table that will be used for finding the probabilities of all different types of continuous variables so how is that possible that one particular table is used for all this means that we have to standardize the variable every time to obtain a standardized value the concept is because we have to find the probabilities using tables therefore the variable needs to be standardized so that one table is sufficient for all normal distribution the standardized value is basically z x is a random variable x is a normally distributed random variable and z is the standardized the value of the z is the standard normal distribution so basically the value of x is the value that the random variable is taking and the value of z is the standardized value so this means every x value has to be standardized to give us a value of z the value of x will be given in the question and we will have to standardize standardize that value to obtain the value of z and the value of z will be used to find the probability this means z is basically known as the standardized value x has a particular value and if we are going to standardize it we will get a value of z and this value of z will be used to find the probability so the standardized value is calculated from the value of the variable x using the following formula now x will be given to us and we will have to find the value of z so the formula for z that is given to us is z is equals to x minus mu upon a standard deviation this formula needs to be remembered this needs to be retained we need to re retain this particular thing in mind so the formula for z is x minus mean upon standard deviation where z is basically known as the standardized value and it is found using the value x given in the question and also using the parameters we know that whenever uh, normal distribution whenever x is normally distributed there are two parameters one is mean and the other is variance so in this formula we are taking mean in the numerator and we are taking standard deviation in the denominator so this means if the variance is this means if the variance is 25 the variance is 25 then the standard deviation would be the square root of it which will be 5 so this means in the formula we are going to use 5 in the denominator x minus mean upon standard deviation x belongs to normal there are two parameters for it mean and variance and z belongs to normal 0,1 what does this mean just like in uh, normal distribution x belongs to normal mean is uh, mu over here the average value is 0 and uh, one is basically the standard deviation the variance so we just uh, never use this fact 0,1 it is just uh, written in the books and everywhere that belongs to normal 0,1 the reason is because uh, when we are going to standardize it then uh, the value of mean will be converted into the value zero z the, the, uh, if x is equals to mu z will be equals to zero this will be explained later right so as, as for the time being just uh, remember that z belongs to normal 0,1 and that is, this is not uh, a problem for us we, as of now we just need to remember that x is a normally distributed variable and we have to standardize it and we have to obtain the value of z now just take this example let's suppose if probability of x is less than equals to 230 but x belongs to normal uh, is we have are given parameters and we are told by the examiner find the probability of x is less than equals to 230 at times we'll be, we will be given x is less than equals to 500 at times we will be given x less than equals to 220 so at times the values of x will be very small at times they will be very big so how is it possible that different values of x will be given by the same table so that is why the concept said that all, the concept is that we always have to standardize so that one particular table is sufficient for all normal distribution so the uh, standardization criteria is x minus mean upon a standard deviation but over here we need to remember that if, that if x is less than equals to 230 then this is z is less than equals to 230 
minus mean because this is mean and this is variance. This is variance. Variance is square. Variance, uh, standard deviation square is variance. Variance is 20 square. This means standard deviation will be 20. So 230 minus mean, which is 205 upon a standard deviation, which is, which is 20. So what are we doing? Z equals to X minus mean upon a standard deviation. Over here, as the inequality is less than equals to, so even when we are dealing with Z, the inequality will remain same. X was less than equals to, so Z is less than equals to. If X is equals to 230, Z is equals to 230 minus 205 upon 20. X is less than equals to 230, Z is less than equals to 230 minus 205 upon 20. So this is the formula for standardization. X minus mean upon standard deviation. And as X is converted into Z, the standardized value will be obtained and the inequality will remain the same. If it is less than equals to, it will remain less than equals to. If it was a greater than equals to, then the, we would have taken greater than equals to. Now, once we have used the formula to standardize it, we can just calculate the value of Z. If Z is less than uh, equals to 230 minus 205 or 220, so we can just use our calculators to calculate it. 230 minus 205 divided by 20 is 1.25. So this means the probability of Z is less than equals to 1.25 needs to be found. And we will be finding this probability using the normal distribution table, right? So this means, and we will just be learning it. Do we know how to use the standardized normal distribution table to find the probabilities? Right, so I've uh, got, I've not got all responses. Everyone can respond, please. The standardized table that is given in the formula sheet as well. Right, so the overall response is, there was only one yes and rest is, this means we have to learn that, right? So this will be learned, no issues. As of now, we just need to remember that because uh, uh, once we know how to read it, then only will be we then only will we be able to find the probability, right? So as of now, I'm starting from the very basics. So I'm telling each and everything. One concept that we have understood up till now is that uh, normal distribution is used to model continuous variables. Continuous variables are those which has which are measurable and which can take decimal values. There are two parameters of normal distribution. And using those two parameters, we always obtain the standardized value. Why? Because single table is used for all normal distributions. Therefore, we have to obtain the standardized value. Once we have obtained the standardized value, we can use the normal distribution table to read the probability. Now, how do we have to actually read it? We will be uh, studying it later on, right? I'm just moving ahead because I have to explain a few more concepts before we can uh, understand how to read the table. We have to uh, understand the logic behind the a normal distribution function. We have to study that before we can just move on to reading this. However, as of now, we just need to remember that once we have found the value of Z, we can easily use the normal distribution table to find the probability. We can easily do that. I will be telling how to do this, right? Normal distribution function. Right, I will have to check it out, uh, Musa. Thanks for the response. Just take a screenshot so that we can move forward. I have to check it out, wait. I have to check it out, 0.894. Yes, Musa, yes. When I am gonna, uh, Tell the reading of the table, right? So I'll be explaining few few important things as well because at times there are few errors that students don't at, at times realize. So I'll be just pointing out those errors as, as well. So even if you know it, uh, no issues. We'll just be discussing it uh, so that you actually know uh, what are the common errors that usually take place. Right. So let's move forward. Graph of normal distribution, right? Graphs of normal distribution. 
and standardized normal distribution. We always, we should know that normal distribution is a symmetrical distribution. There was, it was clearly written over here. The normal distribution is a symmetrical distribution. What does this, does this mean? This is a symmetrical distribution. This means that the data is evenly spread. The data, wait, the data is not evenly spread. Uh, in normal distribution, there's a line of symmetry that exists. So this means that whenever we are going to draw a curve, it is going to be symmetrical. This means many values will be lying in the middle and the equal number of values will be lying towards the right and towards the left of the uh, middle value. This means uh, it is going to be a bell-shaped curve. It is usually known to be a bell-shaped curve. The graph of normal distribution is uh, referred to as the bell-shaped curve because bell looks like this, right? So this is a bell-shaped curve and this is symmetrical. This is a symmetrical because if we are going to draw a vertical line, then uh, equal number of values above and below it. The probability after and yes, it is symmetrical. It will it is symmetrical, right? It's a bell-shaped curve and it is symmetrical. Now at times we have to draw a normal distribution curve. So firstly, we need to understand few basics. There are two things that we have studied. One is uh, the value of x, and the another is the value of z. X is a normally distributed random variable and Z is the standardized value. X is the normally distributed variable and X takes a particular value in a particular question and that varies from question to question. And Z is the standardized value. So graphs of normal distribution, this means graph of X and graph of standardized normal distribution, which means graph of Z. So we need to be very sure how to make the two graphs. Now we always need to remember that whenever we are drawing a graph of X, first we, let's suppose, first we'll be uh, focusing on the graph of X because at times there are few questions, not many, but at times the graph is given to us and we have to understand it and link and convert it into Z. And at times we have to even draw, even the questions present in the past papers, when we have to draw the, graph of x, which is a normally distributed variable. So how do we draw the graph? We need to understand this through a uh, given example. So first let's read few rules. Normal distribution is a symmetrical, the graph of normal distribution will be a symmetrical graph. There will be a line of symmetry. And we also need to remember that for every symmetrical distribution, mean is equals to median equals to mode. For every symmetrical distribution, mean is equals to median equals to mode. Uh, we have studied representation of data of which, in which we have understood that there are three measures of central tendency, right? There are three measures of central tendency. One of them is mean, another is median, and the third one is mode. So for symmetrical distributions, we always need to remember that if the data is symmetrical, if someone says that the given data is symmetrical, this means that even if we are going to find the mean, if, if we are going to find the mean, the median and the mode, all of them will be same. For, for, so for the symmetrical distributions, mean equals to median equals to mode. We always need to remember this, right? So over here, we are uh, more concerned about mean because mu is basically the value of mean. It was just for information purposes that we should know that at times, uh, at times there's a particular question given to us and uh, they tell us that, why explain why this uh, graph explain why this particular variable can be normally distributed. So we need to tell them that this, because this is the data symmetrical and the mean median mode are same, something like that can be linked at times. So we just need to remember this concept for sure that mean equals to mean and equals to mean. Another note that we have to focus on is for any normally distributed variable, nearly all the values lie within three standard deviations from the mean. Now this is an important note. This is what is written in the books. What is the meaning of nearly all Nearly all means, why is it, is it not written all the values? It's written nearly all. So this means that even there can be few values which deviate more than three standard deviations from the mean, which are at, uh, uh, even farther away from the mean, but majority of the values lie within three standard deviations from the mean. What does this mean? Lying within three standard deviations from the mean. What does this actually mean? So this means, that if, if I'm going to draw a number line, let's suppose, 
then if let's suppose uh, the value of mean is lying in the center within three standard deviations from the mean can uh, what first let me give a basic example i am saying within 2 cm of 10 within 2 cm of 10 given yeah, 2 of 10 this means that 10 is a particular value and within 2 would mean 2 on the right and 2 on the left so within 2 of 10 would mean that x would lie between 8 and 12 If the value of x is within two centimeter of ten centimeter, then this would mean that the value of x actually lies between eight and twelve, because two less and two up, and then within these boundaries. So within two centimeter, within I'm here. Someone is telling me that the point where you are standing, you can just move. You can you have to stay within two centimeter of where you are at the moment. so this means we can move two units right we can uh, move two units left or we can move two units forward or we can move two uh, units backwards but we have to remain and stay within those limits so within 2 cm would mean within 2 cm of 10 would mean 10 minus 2 and 10 plus 2 and between 8 and 12 similarly nearly all the values lie within three standard deviation from the mean would mean within three standard deviation this mean uh, if Mu is a value, mean is a value. Then three standard deviations towards the right, three standard deviations towards the left. So this would be mu plus three standard deviations, mean plus three standard deviations, and mean minus three standard deviations. So this would mean that if we have the value of mean and standard deviation with us, and we have to find the maximum value of the value x of the random variable x and the minimum value, what we can do is we can say that mean is in the middle. mu plus 3 times standard deviation will be the highest value mean minus 3 times standard deviation will be the lowest value but again it's written nearly all the values this means even there can be few values which are even lesser than mu minus 3 times standard deviation or which are even greater than mu plus 3 times standard deviation this means values can even lie over here and here we are considering this region right values lie between this region nearly all lie between this region but there can be few values which are even greater than mu plus 3 times standard deviation and there can be values which are even lesser than mu minus 3 times standard deviation but we do not have to consider such values because this is what we need to assume here that nearly all the values lie within 3 standard deviation from the mean so this means whenever we are drawing a normal distribution curve whenever we are drawing a bell shaped curve the lowest value will be mu minus 3 times standard deviation and the greatest value will be mu plus 3 times standard deviation and this will be the limit that will be uh, followed in the examination questions as well. so we do not have to go beyond these limits so and never will the value exceed mu plus 3 times standard deviation nor will it be lesser than mu minus 3 times standard deviation in the past paper question so this is the limit set for our uh, examination although in practical reality there can be few values which are above mu plus 3 times standard deviation or below this right so on the basis of this assumption whenever we have to draw a sketch a curve whenever we have to sketch a curve we can use this assumption to sketch the curve this means that the mean value will be coming in the middle and the highest value will be mu plus 3 times standard deviation and the lowest value will be mean minus 3 times standard deviation another important concept area under the graph represents probability and maximum probability equals to 1 we all know that probability is always equals to 1 so area under this bell shaped graph will be representing probability so this means if under this bell shaped graph the total probability the total area is 1 the total probability the maximum probability is always equals to 1 this means the area under this bell shaped graph is basically equal to 1 and that is why on both sides of this vertical line of this symmetry line of symmetry the probability will be 0.5 this will also be 0.5 and this will also be 0.5 so we all need to remember because of the concept of symmetry the bell shaped graph is equally divided into two regions and each of the region has the area 0.5 because the area basically represents probability now how to sketch the curve so there is uh, one particular example that i have taken from the examination past paper questions and this is one another concept that you need to understand on the basis of this particular example and that is why it is uh, brought here that you can just conceptualize and understand 
you will be learning sketching as well and you will also be able to differentiate between two normally distributed variables as to why one of them is higher one of them has a greater height and another has a lower height so this is another important concept because if you are not going to follow it uh, you will be penalized in the examination and that is why i have to tell this as well so that even one mark of yours is not lost so example says sketch the curves x belongs to normal 15 comma 9 and y belongs to normal 15 comma 36 so if you are discussing about 15 comma 9 so firstly we need to know that the value of mean is 15 and the value of variance is 9 because 15 comma 9 we know that first value is mu and another is variance so if variance is 9 this means the standard deviation will be 3 so whenever we are to draw our normal normal distribution curve sketch what we have to do is we need to know the value of mu we need to know the value of mu plus 3 times standard deviation and we also need to know the value of mu minus 3 times standard deviation. So if we just calculate that 15 minus 3 times standard deviation and 15 plus 3 times standard deviation. So 15 minus 9 is 6, 15 plus 9 is 24, right? 15 minus 9 is 6 and 15 plus 9 is 24. This means for x, for the graph of x, the least value will be 6 and the greatest value will be 24. And if you are going to talk the same, uh, if you have to calculate about for y as well, then the same concept will be repeated. Mu is 15, standard deviation is 6. So mu minus 3 times standard deviation, mu minus 3 times standard deviation would be negative 3 and mu plus three times standard deviation, wait, 15 minus 18, yes, negative three, and mu plus three times standard deviation will be 33, right? So firstly, we calculated the minimum and maximum value. Where did 30 come from? 30 come from, where did 30 come from? Where have I written 30? Have I written 30 anywhere? It's not 30. It's three times standard deviation. This is not 30. Three times standard deviation. Mu plus three times standard deviation and mu minus three times the standard deviation. This is the symbol for standard deviation. I'm drawing a line. Just like we draw S, right? But this is line, 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 line like this and the S is going to touch the line. We draw S like this. S is this, right? Just S this one this is the symbol for standard deviation and this is not 30 right so uh, variance is 9 so standard deviation will be 3 square root of it and on the basis of standard deviation we can find mu minus 3 times standard deviation and mu plus 3 times standard deviation and once we have found the least and the greatest value we can escape now we should know that we have to draw a symmetrical curve so for x the least value is 6 the greatest value is 24 Right, the greatest value is 24. And for y, the least value is negative 3 and the greatest value is 33. Now, you know why one of them has a greater height and another has a smaller height. What is the reason behind that? Why is this that one of them has greater height? And you also know what? If you are going to draw both the sketches, if you are going to sketch both the curves on the same axis and they are of equal height, then you will be penalized. Although you can see that the mean is same for both because both are centered at 15. The line of symmetry for both is uh, at 15, right? So both has a mean of 15. Even then, one of them is at a higher height and one of them has a lesser height. What is the reason behind that? So the logic behind this is that we know that the area under the bell-shaped graph represents probability. And as the probability is equal to one for all the bell-shaped graphs, this means that if the spread is lesser, the height would be greater. Just like if let's suppose if there are two triangles and they are of equal area, one has, one has a lesser base. So if the triangle with the lesser base will have a greater height and the one with the greater base will have a lesser height. So this is the normal concept that if the spread is more, we can see that the minimum value is six and the greatest, greatest is 24. This means the spread is just 18, right? This means that the height would be more because the base is less, the height would be more. And because the base is more, they are more spread out 
the random variable y has more spread out values, therefore the height will be lesser. So we need to just remember this concept that if the graph which has the greater spread will have a lesser height as the area under all the curves is the same and equals to one. Because this is one concept that students tend to omit because uh, when you are sketching for the very first time, you'll never know this. And might be if someone is not going to tell you, you, know, you might not even be able to understand this, that why are we taking greater height for one and smaller height for other? So we need to understand that the probability is same and it depends on the spread. It's not mean minus 30. Emma, there's not mean minus 30. It's mean minus three times standard deviation. And again, repeating, it's not 30, it's three times standard deviation. And this is the concept that is written in the book. Normally, uh, the normal distributed variable, nearly all the values lie within three standard deviations from the mean. Nearly all values lie within three standard deviations. Three standard deviation means three times standard deviation. And I've already explained within three standard deviations mean, within three standard deviations mean more uh, mu plus three times standard deviation, mu plus three times standard deviation, and mu minus three times standard deviation. So mu is given 15. Standard, the variance is nine because these values are of variance. We know that the parameters of normal distribution are mean and variance. So the value of variance is given nine and 36 are value of variance. The standard deviation can be found by square root by placing a square root on nine. The square root of nine is three. The square root of 36 is six. Once we have found the standard deviation for both, we will just write mu minus three standard deviation for the lowest value and mu plus three standard deviation for the highest value. And same as what we have done for y. And then we have sketched, uh, uh, we have also understand the concept that if the spread is less, height will be more. If the spread is more, height will be less. Are we clear with this concept? Are we all clear with this concept? Just acknowledge, everyone to acknowledge, take a screenshot so that we can move forward. Whenever you are taking screenshots, when I'm telling you to take screenshots, please take screenshots and make sure that you make all the notes. Because just to save our time, I don't uh, give time for copying so that you can save some time. Because usually whenever I'm teaching, I give my students time to copy as well. Yes, Malak, I'm an uh, Okay, wait, sir. So I know that for the graph, we show the mean in the middle. Then where do we show like the standard deviation or the variance? Where do we show that? We are not showing standard deviation or the variance. We are just showing mean plus three times standard deviation. We are showing the value which is obtained after adding three standard deviations in the value of mean or after subtracting three times standard deviation from the value of mean. We are not showing the value of variance or standard deviation directly in the graph. We are showing mean, we are showing mean minus three times standard deviation, and we are showing mean plus three times standard deviation. So we show the mean, the maximum and minimum points, basically. That's it, right? Uh, Yes, the value of mean line lies, lies in the middle and uh, it's the maximum point. It's the maximum, no, maximum point is a different story. We are not talking about the maximum points because it's, it's not a coordinate. We don't have coordinates of I x, comma, y. Like I meant the largest value, my bad. Yes. All right, okay, thank you. Uh, the mean has the highest probability. The value of mean is uh, has the highest height. On the value of mean, the, in the middle, the height of the graph is the highest. And if we are two graphs are made in the same axis, then we need to judge which has the greater height. And on, on the basis of how can we judge which has the greater height? Have you understood that? Because if the uh, standard is, if the spread is less, the height will be more. If the spread is more, the height will be less. Right. So all are clear, right? Perfect. Then moving forward. Right. Now, now we are moving on to normal distribution function. The first line says, once the value of Z is found, the probability can be found using the standard normal distribution table. So the standardized normal distribution table will be given to us. 
and on the basis of that we will be finding the probability so we have already uh, studied before that once the value of z is found we are just going to read that particular value from the given table and that table is uh, always given to us in the examination and we have to understand how to read that particular table so once the value of z is found the probability can be found using the standard normal distribution table now the normal distribution function is basically phi z this sign is known as phi this same symbol we used to study in sets as well null set this was a symbol for null set over here we are calling it phi this is phi a zero and it is cancelled so this is symbol for phi so phi z is the normal distribution function now what phi z actually means once the value of z is found the probability can be found using the standard normal distribution table the table gives the value of phi z always remember that the table will be giving the value of phi z now why what is phi z phi z means read z phi z means phi z means probability of z is less than equal to what is the meaning of phi z phi z means i missed one thing over here sorry my bad let me get back to it we have just understood that uh, how to draw the graph of normal distribution of uh, if x is normally distributed we have learned how to draw the graph of x if y is normally distributed we have understood how to draw the graph of y but what about the graph of standard normal distribution so we need to remember this as well. so just a uh, few calculations if the value of x is equals to mean so we know the formula for z is x minus mean upon standard deviation so if the value of x is basically mu the value of z at that point would be mu minus mu upon standard deviation and that would be equal to zero so you can just check out that uh, the graph of a normal distribution is centered at mu and the graph of standard normal distribution is centered at zero this means when the value of x is actually equal to mu this means mu minus mu upon standard deviation will be equal to zero so when x takes the value mean the value of z will be zero and that is why over here the center value is mean and over here the center value is zero secondly the highest value is mu plus 3 times standard deviation so z is x minus mean upon standard deviation so if we are just to find the highest value of z in place of x i will write mu plus 3 times standard deviation minus mu upon a standard deviation then mu and mu will get cancelled this this will be 3 standard deviation upon standard deviation standard deviation standard deviation got cancelled the answer is so if the value of x is mu plus 3 times standard deviation the value of z will be 3 similarly using the same formula if the value of x is mu minus 3 times standard deviation the value of z will be negative so this is fixed for all normal distribution although the graph of normal distribution will vary minimum value and maximum value for a normally distributed variable will, will vary depending on the data given but graph of standard normal distribution will always be like this this will always remain fixed the minimum value will be negative 3 and the greatest value will be 3 so this means whenever we are to read the probability from the table the value of z that will be given by the examiner will lie between negative 3 and 3. this means nearly all values lie between negative 3 and 3. and as i said nearly all in practical reality there can be values which are greater than 3 or less than negative 3 but for examination purposes the least value of z that can be given is negative 3 and the greatest value of z that can be given to us is 3 so whenever we are drawing the uh, graph of uh, standard normal distribution this means the graph of z which is uh, where z is the standardized value the minimum value will be negative 3 the maximum will be 3 and the center value will be 3 and this will be fixed for all standard standardized normal distribution graph and again the probability of 0.5 is here and 0.5 is here because this is a normal uh, symmetrical graph towards the right the probability is 0.5 towards the left the probability is 0.5 so no matter what the values of uh, a normally distributed variables are the the graph of standard normal distribution will always remain fixed minimum value negative 3 maximum 3 and middle value 0 are we clear with it I, uh, is there any confusion here
I have also shown the substitution in the formula just to clarify why the value of negative how the value of negative three and three came. Right. Take another screenshot so that even the work that I've done can be captured. Right, so normal distribution function. Now, whenever we are finding probabilities, we always draw the, stat the graph of standard normal distribution. Just to uh, understand what is actually required, we always draw the Z graph the bell-shaped graph, but the Z graph we are drawing. Why? Because the uh, table that has been given to us is of standard normal distribution, standardized normal distribution. This means the value of Z will be used to find the probability. Therefore, whenever we are given a particular value of Z, we always draw a graph to conceptualize and understand what is actually required. And the graph that we actually draw is the graph of Z. Although we have studied how to draw the graph of the original variable X, but uh, we will be using the graph of X only when it is required by the examiner. If it is not required by the examiner to draw the graph of X, then the graph that we will be using in general will be the graph of the standardized normal distribution that is the graph of Z. So for solving questions, we, we will always be using the graph of Z, which is the minimum value of negative three and the maximum value of three. But if only when the examiner has instructed us to draw the graph of the original normally distributed variable, then we have to follow the steps that I've taught above. This is what I'm saying. Uh, this, this O cancelled is known as phi. And phi Z, phi Z, phi Z means, phi Z means read Z from the table. But again, then it depends whether the value of Z is positive or negative. I'm just clarify, clarifying it in a while. Wait, wait, just give me a minute for this because this is something that needs to be elaborated and this needs to be conceptualized, right? If Even if you are just going to understand this as of now, an important task would be covered. Reading from the table is an easy task. We can cover it, cover that easily. But as of now, we just need to understand what the normal distribution function is. Because once we have understood this, then inshallah, uh, things will start to get better. This is a not, not a difficult topic. It just requires some conceptualization, some understanding of the basics. Once we have clear with the basics, and once we have understood few rules, then inshallah, we'll not be getting stuck up in this particular topic. So phi z, what is phi z? Phi z is the normal distribution function. Uh, and whenever we have found the value of z, we have to read that particular value of Z in the table. Now, what actually this means? Now, just need to remember this. Phi Z means probability of Z is less than equal to Z. So let's suppose, let's suppose if the value of Z that we have got is 1.25. And if we are to read Phi Z, so Phi Z would mean, Phi Z would mean Phi 1.25. And phi 1.25 actually means probability of Z is less than equals to 1.25. It's just to differentiate uh, capital Z and small z because we are writing Z is less than equals to uh, 1.25 over here, the value of Z will come. If the value of Z is 1.25, then phi 1.25 means, phi 1.25 means read 1.25 from the table. What does, does this mean? Read 1.25 from the table. Right, so phi 1.25, if we are going to draw a graph of it, because we always will be understanding through graph with the help of graph, so just check it out. This is Z, this is a bell-shaped graph, the minimum value is negative three, the maximum is three. Phi 1.25 means probability of Z is less than equals to 1.25. So at the center, there would be zero. 1.25 would lie towards the right of the symmetry line. And Phi 1.25 means Z, probability of Z is less than equals to 1.25. This means this region is required. This means this region is required. So whenever we are 
uh, reading the particular value of z from the table, we always get the probability of this particular region that I've shaded. I repeat, whenever we are whenever we are reading the particular value of z from the table, we will be getting the probability of the bigger area. We will be getting the probability of the bigger region. I'll, I'll just be clarifying this, what the bigger region means, what the smaller region is, just give me some time. I'm just uh, explaining this concept. Let's suppose, uh, because if we check out the example, we had to find probability of Z is less than equals to 1.25, right? So if we just draw a bell-shaped graph, the inequality was given by the examiner. X was less than equals to 230. So Z is less than equals to 1.25. So if this is Z, we just will mark 1.25 on the graph, right? 1.25 is marked on the graph. And Z less than equals to 1.25 means the entire region is required. So whenever this entire bigger region is required, what we are going to do is we will go in the table and we will read the value of 1.25. Reading. If you know, it's good. If you don't know, we'll study in the next class, right? As of now, we just have to clarify this as to when we have to uh, read and how we have to read. How to read is the next, next task of the next class. But uh, what we have to read and how we have to make calculations, this is important. So if, let's suppose, the probability of Z is less than equals to 2.3. Five seven. What will what will we do? We will be drawing a bell shaped graph. We'll say z. The minimum value is negative three. The maximum value is three. Two point three five seven will be nearer to the maximum value. Somewhere over here. Two point three five seven. And probability of z is less than equals to two point three five seven is required. This means the entire region before two point three five seven will, will be shaded. And if we need the probability of this, what we will do, we will go in the table and we will read Z is equals to 2.357 and we will be getting the probability of bigger region. Now, why am I uh, using this terminology bigger region? So over here, we need to understand that whenever a particular value of Z is taken, every value of Z divides the graph into two unequal parts, except the value Z equals to zero. Because Z equals to zero lies, lies in the middle, Z equals to zero lies in the middle. So this means the value of Z equals to zero will divide into two equal halves. Towards the right, the probability will be 0.5 and towards the left will also be 0.5. But any value other than zero will divide the graph into two unequal parts. One will be a bigger part and one will be a smaller part. Any value of Z, no matter where the value of Z is, any value of Z will divide the graph into two unequal parts. One will be a smaller part and one will be a bigger part. Now, if that particular value of Z is read from the standardized normal distribution table, what will happen? We will be getting the probability of bigger part. So bigger part table always gives this part. Every value of Z divides the graph into two unequal parts. Right? Table will always, Musa, just give me a minute. No questioning at all because uh, let me take my time because I know at times explaining few concepts is a bit tricky and it takes a bit of time from teachers and as well. So I'll be giving my best. I'll repeat. I'll uh, try to deliver. And once I have completely delivered, then any question that you have, you can ask. Because uh, if you write on the chat message, then my attention gets diverted and I start looking at the question of yours. So I just want to concentrate as of now. So I, it would be really appreciated if you could just focus for five, five uh, more minutes, and then you'll ask questions if you have, right? I'll be answering every question without any doubt. So uh, what, where we were? Yes, we were uh, discussing that every value of Z divides the graph into two unequal parts. One is the smaller part and one is the bigger part. We have seen over here as well, even when the value was 1.253, one was the bigger part, one was the smaller part. Even when the, when the value was 2.357, one was the bigger part, another was the smaller part. 
as of now we are focusing on just the positive values of z as of now we are just focusing on positive values of z as far as negative values of z are concerned we will discuss that later why are we discussing that later why because in the standardized normal distribution table there are only positive values of z in the table we will never see negative values of z this means we can only read positive values of z from the table but does this mean that negative values of z will never come no this does not mean this negative values will also be given but still we, we we will be using the same table in which there are only positive values so how can we link both this we will understand properly but as of now we are focusing on the positive values of z so if the value of z is positive then any positive value of z except z equals to 0 will divide the normal distribution the standardized normal distribution graph the bell shaped graph into two unequal parts bigger part and the smaller part when we are then we will read that particular value of z from the normal distribution table from the standardized normal distribution table we will get the probability of the bigger region and we all know that the region that i have shaded is uh, basically the probability because area under the bell shaped graph represents probability so any region that i am shading has a certain probability and that probability if the region is a bigger region then that probability will be found using the standardized normal distribution so whenever we are reading a particular value of z from the table we write phi value as i have written over here if probability of z is less than equals 1.25 then we know that there is a bigger region the value of z uh as i have drawn here let me just shift this over here so that we are more clear i have shifted it over here right so if i have to read this what does this mean z is less than equals to 1.25 means the bigger region what we will do whenever we have to find the probability of the bigger region we directly read that particular value from the table so we write phi 1.25 what is the meaning of phi phi means go and read 1.25 from the table If I'm saying five one point two five, this means go and read one point two five from the table, right? Five one point two five means go and read one point two five from the table. What if, what if the examiner is asking me to find probability of z is less than equals to one point two? So whenever a particular inequality is defined, the first thing that we need to do is we sketch the problem. yes after a lot of practice we might not need this graph as well and we can find probability directly as well but initially we need to conceptualize and i will always recommend that even if you have moved uh, further away in normal distribution and you have covered all the basics even then it is always recommended that you always draw a bell shaped graph of uh, the standardized normal distribution the graph of z and on the basis of that you find the probability so that you never do a mistake right so what i i am doing over here is i am marking 1.25 but this time the examiner is not asking me to find the probability of z is less than equals to 1.25 but examiner is telling me to find the probability of greater than equals to 1.25 so greater than equals to 1.25 means till the end this one and now as soon as we shaded this region we identified that this is the smaller region this is the smaller region so what to do in case of a smaller region in case of a smaller region what we do is in case of a smaller region we always read the particular value of z from the table and we subtract the answer from one why because whenever we read the value of z from the table the value will always give whenever we read the z value of z from the table we always get the probability of bigger region so whenever we have to find the probability of a smaller region what we do we know that the total area under the graph is one so if we have found the value if we have found the probability of the bigger region we will subtract the probability of the bigger region from one to find the probability of the smaller region so this means that if as per the given inequality the region that is required is the smaller one what we will do we will first read 1.25 from the table which means 5 1.25 five means go and read 1.25 from the table but in this case what we will do is we will subtract the answer from the answer will be 
1 minus 5, 1.25. The answer will be 1 minus 5, 1.25. This means that whenever the examiner, as of now, as of today, we have just understood and uh, conceptualized how to read the positive value of Z. If the value of Z is positive, then every value of Z divides the normal distribution graph, the graph of Z into two unequal parts. One is the bigger region and one is the smaller region. The bigger region will be found directly by reading the probability from the table. But for finding the probability of the smaller region, we will subtract the answer by one. Whatever probability is given to us by the table, we'll subtract that answer from one. So over here, the, summarized, the summary is written, whenever a particular value of Z is given, their Z is positive. As of now, we are focusing on positive values of Z only. Why? Because the graph will always be uh, allowing us to read positive values of Z. So we cannot read negative values of Z from the table. But if the value of Z is given in the examination and it is negative, then how will we use, how will we link that with the positive one and how will we read that? We'll study that later on. So as of now, we just need to remember that if the value of Z is positive, then every positive value of Z will divide the graph of normal distribution into two unequal parts. One is the smaller region, one is the bigger region. If as per the inequality, we have identified that the bigger region is required, we will just be reading that particular value of Z from the given table. And the answer that we are going to get will be the required answer. However, if as per the given inequality, the region that is required is the smaller one, what we will do, we will be finding the probability of the bigger region by reading from the table, and we will then be subtracting the answer from one. So phi z, in case of bigger region, if the bigger region is required, we just read z from the table and give the answer. But in case of a smaller region, we read the value of z from the table, and whatever answer we get, we subtract it from one, and then we get the answer of the smaller region, where the value of z is positive. And then value of z is always maximum to three decimal places that we'll discuss later on, right? As of now, we have just understood that whenever we have found the value, when do we have to uh, subtract from one and when we do not have to subtract from one, we have understood that if the region is smaller, then we go and read the answer from the table, the probability from the table and we subtract from one. But in case of bigger region, no, no need of subtraction, whatever the probability is given by the table, that will be the answer, right? One of the students has raised hands. Do we still have a question, Musa? Or is it clear? Yes, Musa. Yeah, hi, sir. Uh, that, uh, my maths teacher gave me this uh, one problem which involves negative value of Z. That's why I was asking about it. Because like, uh, I just want to know how do you link that with the table? Like, how does that link with the table? Because the table only has positive values. Surely. Uh, so I'm, uh, let me ex give... Let me take five more minutes and I'll, ex I'll explain that also, right? Give me five more minutes left. Uh, I'll explain right now, okay? So firstly, are we all clear with the positive values? Because uh, Musa wants to know the negative values right now because you have been given the question by the bio teacher. So it's better that we understand negative values as well right now. We can extend the class by five or 10 more minutes. So no issues. Uh, firstly, are we clear till here? Okay. Uh, please, everyone can get acknowledgement because any question that you have, ask right now. Because if you are not clear as of now, you'll face problems later. I just need acknowledgement. Right. So now, how can we, uh, if the values of Z is negative, how can we link that with the positive one to use the normal distribution table? Now let's understand this concept over here. I'll explain this in a better way. Let's suppose, let's suppose, if the value of Z is negative, examiner has said, uh, we have, the variable was X and the inequality was less than equals to when we standardized it, we got a negative value of Z. Because uh, Z is never given directly. 
normally we are given x we have to standardize it using the formula x minus mean upon standard deviation and once we have standardized then we obtain the value of z but if the after standard is standardization we get a negative value let's suppose that the value of z is negative 1.25 so z is less than equals to negative 1.25. What we will do, we'll first sketch it. What we are doing, we'll first sketch the bell-shaped graph. We have sketched the bell-shaped graph. We have marked one point negative 1.25. It will be nearer to negative three. The least value is negative three. The greatest is three. The negative 1.25 will always be nearer to negative three because this is negative three. This is positive three. The negative 1.25 will be near to negative three. If the value is negative 1.25, right? If the value is negative 1.25, then what we will do? What we will do? We'll first shade. Z is less than equal to negative 1.25. We have shaded it. Now we need to know that because of the concept of symmetry, the region towards the left of negative 1.25 will be the same as region towards the right of 1.25. If we are to mark them on the same graph, then this is the line of symmetry, right? Symmetry, line of symmetry means whatever is towards the right will be towards the left. So if we are marking negative 1.25 over here, and we are marking 1.25 over here, this means this region will equal to this region. So with this concept, if the region required is uh, less than or equals to negative 1.25, this means it will be the same as Z is greater than or equals to 1.25. And we know that if we are to find Z is greater than 1.25, then because this is a smaller region, what we do? We first read that particular value from the table, 51.25, go and read from the table, and then we subtract the answer from it. So similarly, if there's a negative value, firstly, we link that with the positive one, and we should know that uh, because this is a smaller region, then with the, uh, even with the positive value, there is a smaller region, both of them have the same probability. So this means, we will link that with the positive one and ultimately we'll find the probability by this one minus five, 1.25. So just to summarize it, now also uh, let me give another example. Z is greater than equals to minus 2.2. We should also know that whether the inequality is greater than equals to or whether it is greater than. It will not create any difference to us. It will not create any difference for us because the probability will still remain the same, right? Because if uh, Z is greater than negative 2.2, 2.2 or greater than equals to negative 2.2, it is still the same. So what we will do, we'll first draw, we'll first draw a bell shape graph. We'll mark negative 2.2. Greater than negative 2.2 means bigger region. We need to know that this is exactly the same as if 2.2 marked here and the bigger region. So this means what we will do, we'll say that uh, Z is uh, greater than negative 2.2 is the same as Z is less than 2.2. Z is greater than negative 2.2 is the same as Z is less than 2.2. And in this case, because the bigger region is required, we need to write phi 2.2. This means we just need to read the value of 2.2 from the table and we have to give the answer. So somebody tells us that whether the value of Z is positive or negative, whether the value of Z is positive or negative, we first sketch and identify whether the region is small or big. If the region is the bigger region as per the given value of Z and the given inequality sign, if the region is a bigger region, P will be writing phi Z. And when the region is the smaller region, uh, we, phi z means go and read the value of z from the table. And when the region is a smaller region, then we'll uh, read z from the table and we'll subtract from it. 
But we also need to remember that whenever we are taking the value inside the bracket, the value of Z will always be positive. Why? Because the value that we can read, it will always be the positive value. The table will never give us negative value. The table will never give us negative value. The table will always give us positive value. So that is why even if when the value of uh, Z is given to us, we can sk skip this step. Once we know that greater than negative 2.2 means bigger region, we know that this means bigger region. So we can directly write phi 2.2. 2.2, phi 2.2. We know that we have a bigger region, so we uh, should know that the value of Z that we are going to read will not be negative 2.2, we'll just ignore the negative sign. We'll be using this particular thing to sketch. Once we have sketched and identified that we need the probability of bigger region, then we should know that whenever, the sir has uh, specifically told us that whenever we need probability of bigger region, we just go to the table and read directly. And as we can read only positive values, so we will be reading just 2.2 from the table and the answer will be uh, found. However, if on the basis of this, the region is smaller, then we'll read the positive version of the given value of Z and we'll subtract the answer from that. So bigger region, go and read directly and give the answer. Smaller region, go and read the answer and subtract from that. I've repeated this concept several times. Hope you all are clear with it. Just need acknowledgement. Musa, are you all happy with now? I'm clear with this. No, should my pleasure. Although I got a bit late for a particular class. However, uh, if you are satisfied, I'm also satisfied, right? Students are happy, teacher is also happy. So all the best. Inshallah, uh, hopefully, just take a screenshot of this. Hopefully, you have understood this concept and uh, definitely we'll continue this topic again in the next class uh, and we'll share more things, we'll uh, share more depth, definitely. Inshallah, I'll be uploading this recording as well whenever I get time. And definitely you can revise before the next class. Perfect. It's always a good strategy to review and then get back in the next class. Please get, uh, review all the concepts and then come in the next class. See you in the next class. Take care. Have a good day. A lot.